a giant asteroid fell to Earth and destroyed all dinosaurs with a blast wave. That's what we've all heard. It was a terrible disaster, but it was actually much worse. You can't even imagine how unfortunate it was for dinosaurs and what kind of disaster they faced. It wasn't just a piece of solid rock from space, but a lump of molten clay. It provoked not just a tsunami, but giant mud waves. It filled the atmosphere, not only with a burnt smell, but also with an acidic and foul smell of rotten eggs. It didn't just sweep everything away with a blast wave. It provoked a volcanic winter, poisoned the air, and blocked the sun. And do you know what the most unfortunate thing was? If the angle of the fall had been just a little bit different, or if it had fallen a little further away, then there might not have been any global catastrophe. That asteroid, the size of Mount Everest, fell in the coastal part of the Yucatan Peninsula. This place separates the Gulf of Mexico from the Caribbean Sea. The asteroid touched both solid rock and water and immediately triggered strong tsunamis and mega ripples. These are large sand waves that are normally about 3 feet long on average and leave a pattern similar to dunes on the seabed. Oh, by the way, they're really called subaqueous dunes. So, when the meteorite fell, it formed 52-foot-high mega ripples. Can you imagine? Giant waves of sea mud that are almost as high as a 5-story building. But how did the scientists figure it out? They used 3D seismic data and modeled the mega ripples pattern in the program. The data was based on the landscape of the bottom, which was impacted 66 million years ago. First, a powerful strike triggered a strong earthquake that liquefied the seabed layer, and then a high-grade tsunami triggered those mega-ripples. That is, while giant waves on the surface flooded the land and went into open waters, large mud waves destroyed the seabed. Ancient fish, dinosaurs, and other underwater creatures didn't stand a chance. But what does this information tell us? Well, first, studying the effects of ancient tsunamis helps to reconstruct the past of our planet. Secondly, it helps us to be prepared if something like this happens in the future. Predicting a scenario like this could save countless lives in case of danger. Okay, there was a total mess in the water at the time of impact. But what was happening on land was much, much worse and scarier. But let's discuss the meteorite itself first and what it consisted of. The scientists analyzed the rocks at the impact site and saw traces of carbonaceous chondrites. This is the rock that makes up most of the meteorites in space. Often this rock contains water, clay, and organic compounds with carbon. It means that, in a sense, a lump of dirt the size of the highest mountain on the planet fell on Earth. And yes, carbonaceous chondrites often have an unusual smell of rotten eggs, tar, or wet hay. So it wasn't just very loud, but it also probably smelled bad. It was a fetid rocket on a planetary scale. However, at the time of the fall, not a single living creature was there to sniff it. All of them lost their lives in the first seconds of the disaster, hit by the devastating blast wave. It set a chain of events that later wiped out all the dinosaurs from the face of the Earth. The peninsula where the meteorite fell turned into a large crater in an instant. Thousands of tons of soot and ash were released into the air. A huge area was filled with thick smoke. The sky turned gray. Black clouds obscured the sun. But wait, where did the ashes come from? The crash site contained huge reserves of flammable materials. In simple words, the meteorite fell into a giant barrel of fuel which started to burn. The sky remained dark. Grass, plants, trees, and bacteria couldn't get enough sunlight. The green world began to wither. And this affected not only the impact site, but almost the entire continent. Even dinosaurs living far away felt the low temperatures and lack of ultraviolet light. Dinosaurs couldn't survive in such conditions. The environment was changing too fast. Then it got even worse. A firestorm was spreading in all directions from the place where the meteorite had fallen. The air inside the storm was poisonous and dangerous to inhale. And you know why? Because the meteorite fell in a coastal area and destroyed the seabed. And under that seabed, there were large reserves of sulfur. 
This toxic mass rose into the air, mixed with ash, soot, red-hot pieces of rock, and meteorite particles. Then the winds picked up this cloud and began to spread it across the continent. The rainforests that survived the blast waves were still in danger, as the hot toxic cloud rained down red-hot ash upon them. This caused large-scale fires. The smoke from the burning trees rose and became part of the destructive cloud. The more trees burned, the larger and thicker the poisonous ash cloud grew. What could have stopped this catastrophe? Rain clouds filled with water, right? Good point, but they didn't. When the hot ash and sulfur fumes mixed with water, they created acid rain, a downpour of poisonous, corrosive mud that wiped out all life around it. Fires, firestorm, acid rain, sun blockage… How could dinosaurs survive after that? Where could they escape? Perhaps the ocean shore? Mm, bad idea. Yeah, the water could have protected them from the fire and ashes, but there was another problem. Do you remember mega ripples and giant tsunamis? A huge wave that hit the shore at that moment could easily wash away New York. Smaller waves rolled across the Atlantic Ocean and the North Pacific. So, if dinosaurs on land had tried to hide near the shore, they would have been swept away like specks of dust by that giant tsunami. But what about underwater dinosaurs? They were not affected by the tsunami and the fire cloud, but they were trapped. Red-hot, poisoned particles of ash and mud fell into the ocean in huge quantities and poisoned the water. Algae and photoplankton were destroyed. Because of this, millions of fish lost their food supply. And as a result, larger fish and marine dinosaurs were left with nothing to eat. Large-scale famine triggered extinction in the ocean. Toxic particles poisoned the water for many marine life forms. The gills of fish couldn't extract pure oxygen from the water, which only worsened the situation. Near the Yucatan Peninsula, the ocean floor with its coral reefs and ancient sea creatures was destroyed. This huge part of Earth's biodiversity disappeared, upsetting the balance of the oceans. Of course, the destruction couldn't go on forever. At one point, the ashes cooled and settled to the ground. The sulfur cloud dispersed, the fires went out, and the air became clearer. Warm rays of sunlight began to shine down on Earth again. But there was something sinister about the silence. The planet no longer heard the rustle of pterodactyl wings, the roar of a hungry Tyrannosaurus, and the noise of a Velociraptor's fast feet. The storm had passed, along with the dinosaurs. By the way, some flying lizards and small animals survived. Later, they evolved into modern mammals and birds. It wasn't the meteorite that destroyed dinosaurs. Fires couldn't do it either. Dinosaurs disappeared because of the famine caused by the catastrophe. Disruption of the food chain led to the mass extinction of these magnificent lizards. After the catastrophe, life began to blossom again. However, the emergence of large mammals was still a long way off. But now, millions of years have passed. Large elephants, rhinos, and other animals walk on Earth, along with the most unique mammal on the planet – the human. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.